Here's another shot of my walkway here in the backyard and the deck. I have it on white hot now and you can see that the, uh, the walkway is white because it's probably warmed up from during the daytime. Um, I'll just cycle through so you can see the different modes again. There's black hot so that's the grass is the white part and then the black stuff is the walkway and then there's the deck. Uh, you got the highlight white, highlight black, red, green, then you have the predator style, uh, then you got copper, I like copper, copper's a good one, and then white again, and then I'll show you my car here, which I, uh, just drove, uh, about 30 minutes ago, I just came back from the movie theater, so... Let's see how it compares. You can see the, the front of the car is warm, but the back is dark. Um, the wheels are warm as well. Let's see if we have it set for black hot. You see the wheels are dark because I was just driving. Um, we got highlight white, highlight black, red, green, range, copper. Then I'll show you the engine. You can see the uh, the hood is warm. Got white hot, black hot, uh, highlight white, highlight black, red, green, predator, and uh, copper again. So it's pretty cool. I'll see what else we can find out here. Nothing really. What's going on guys? It's Greg here. I just wanted to do a quick review of a new product that I got today. Uh, and that's the Loophold LTO Tracker High Definition. Uh, this is actually a discontinued model of the LTO Tracker series. So if you go online, you can actually get it like 50% off. It's normally $1,000. I got it for $500 on uh, Midway USA. And uh, it's a very good uh, product. Uh, it does have some limitations to it, uh, which I'll discuss in this video. I'm going to do a overview of the features, and I'll show you guys some screenshots of the actual thermal in action, and uh, show you guys... You know how good it picks up things, uh, hot spots and, and heat and stuff like that. Um, it's definitely better suited for nighttime use, but it could still work during the day. Uh, but at night, it's definitely better, uh, especially if you're trying to spot game animals or people for security reasons. Because um, during the day, it's a lot hotter with the sunshine and everything. Um, unless you're working in the shade with it, you know, but so there are some limitations, but that's with every thermal. Um, and then I'll cover some, uh, limitations specific to this product. And then I'll talk about, uh, you know, why this is a good optic for preppers and, uh, hunters, outdoorsmen, uh, anybody who's interested in personal security you know, home security, personal security, uh, it's, thermals are a very good tool to have for those reasons. Um, so I'm going to get started now. I'm going to go over the features and uh, I'll give you a close-up look of the actual device itself. Um, so this is the actual device. It's, uh, let me see, a tape measure is probably around six inches long. The, the lens that you actually look through is probably about an inch and a half. And then the, the ocular lens, the objective lens, actually not the ocular lens, the, the objective lens is about an inch and a, a third, I would say. Um, it's lightweight. It has, you have a nice grip on it. Fits the hand well. Um, it's got this nice knurling here and, and on the body so you can grip it nicely. Um, it's a very tough aluminum. Um, 
It's very thick aluminum. It has this uh, crannulated end where the where the actual thermal uh, lens is. Um, it's supposed to be waterproof and shockproof. Uh, so it's I like the black color. It's a low low vis. You know, it doesn't stand out. Um, so I'll show you LTO tracker HD. Uh, let's see, what does it say here? Loopold LTO tracker HD, and then the resolution 320 by 240. Um, so it's it's definitely well built and it's lightweight. It's only supposed to be half a pound. So this is great for putting in your bug out bag, survival bag. This easily fits in your pocket, you know, if you're going out somewhere uh, and you want to have a little extra security with you and be able to see things in the dark at night, you know, if you want to see if there's any uh, animals or, you know, potential uh, people that may be dangerous to you, you know, you could easily fit this in a pocket. Um, it has three buttons for operation, um, so it's very simple to use, and I'll, I'll try to get a... a tape measure real quick so I can measure it for you. So just to give you guys a size comparison, these are just some uh, these are some glasses, my fiance's uh, reading glasses. So those are her glasses so it's pretty much you know the same size as you know the average pair of reading glasses. Um, but I'll give you an official measurement here. It's going to be five and a half inches. And then the tube here, like I said, it's going to be about an inch and a half. And then the, you know, the objective lens is about an inch and a quarter. So it's a very manageable size. Now this this is not rated for mounting to a firearm. Um, this is just an observation tool. It's not for. It's not designed to be mounted to firearms. Um, this is the actual box here. Uh, comes in this nice box. It's like a high quality uh, box that they put it in. Loophole tracker, thermal observation, and game recovery. Um, this is definitely good for, I would say, if you're trying to recover game, you know, um, or even just tracking people or animals. Uh, it picks up things on the ground that are hot or warm very well, and I'll, I'll show you that soon. You can actually see footprints. Uh, you can see any type of fluids that are on the ground. It's extremely sensitive, so, you know, if you're trying to, let's say, track a blood trail, uh, or track an animal if it was walking through an area it definitely lives up to its name you know it can definitely track that's for sure um, so I'll just stand it up here and I'll, I'll go through the brochure real quick um, let's see these are the color palettes so you have the predator color you have red white hot black hot green uh, copper and then they have white highlight and black highlight so eight color modes uh, it has a six power digital zoom so it's not an optical zoom digital zoom and optical zoom are two different things um, just so you guys are aware uh, digital zoom when when you see that somewhere what that means is like that's like if let's say you're on your computer and you downloaded a picture uh, uh, you know some type of JPEG or a GIF file and you and you want to zoom into the picture you you zoom into it that's a digital zoom uh, and that's basically what this does you know so so that has some limitations it, it's not actually optically zooming it's it's zooming after the picture has already been taken um, and an optical zoom is, is kind of like a traditional zoom like on a binocular monocular uh, or your cell phone camera for example um, that is one of the drawbacks with this thing but I think a lot of thermal cameras in this price range they're not gonna have optical zoom if you want to have optical zoom you're gonna be looking at like you know two thousand dollars plus uh, for a thermal um, 
but for an entry level thermal this is does the job well for me um, let's see and for my needs so it has a detection distance of 750 yards it has a operating rain temperature of minus 4 Fahrenheit to 140 it detects temperatures from minus 40 to 572 um, the display resolution is actually really good 390 by 390 six times digital zoom eight color pellets uh, and then it uses a CR123 battery um, with automatic shut off after 15 minutes and uh, what I I just ordered is actually some 1634 rechargeable batteries for this thing um, because CR123s they burn quick and they're expensive so what I did was I went on Phoenix uh, website Phoenix flashlights and I ordered a bunch of their 1630 16340 rechargeable batteries so this way I can recharge it and which is really good in the field too because you can take a battery pack and you can just recharge your batteries from the battery pack especially if you have like a solar power bank you can charge that battery with a solar bank and then use that to charge your batteries rather than having to carry like 20 batteries with you and constantly throw them out you know you can just use like two ba two batteries and, and cycle cycle them so while you're using one you're charging the other um, let's see what else is there anything else to show you so this is just the brochure here I, I haven't actually extensively tested this uh, in different conditions uh, you know I just got it so I'm just gonna do it the best that I can uh, with you know the amount of time that I've owned it and give you guys a, a, an overview um, so now I'll show you guys the actual features and how it works uh, so basically you have three buttons here this is the power button you just hold that on and it turns on okay and then you have your I'll show you my let's see what can we it's gonna be a little bit hard to see there's my fingertip um, let's see here and so you have different modes you have uh, eight color palettes so I'm gonna see if I can show you guys that real quick um, sorry about this I'm going to see what I can zoom in on here uh, let's see here so this is my TV so I think we'll just test with the TV here uh, as you can see, white is so you have eight modes. You have white hot, and you have black hot, where where anything that's warm is black. Then you have highlight white, so it highlights the hot spots with like this orange color. Highlight black. You have red, so the darker reds is a cooler, and the more orange color is warmer. Then you have green so the lighter greens are warmer darker greens are cooler um, then you have the predator color the blues are cooler and the yellows and reds are warmer copper uh, the pinks and, and purples are cooler and the yellows and oranges are warm then you have white again um, you can also change the brightness um, you can hold this button down and that lets you adjust the brightness so I can make it brighter if I want to or I can cool it down you know make it lighter um, and then you have your zoom here uh, let's see you have 2x 3x 4x 5x 6x alright guys so I want to show you why they call this thing the tracker. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, you can actually track footsteps. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk down this hallway here. And I'm going to turn around and show you guys uh, my footsteps. And uh, 
you'll see that I don't even have to stand that long for it to show up. Obviously, the longer I stand in an area, the more heat that transfers from my body to the ground. Um, but you'll see even just a quick walk. And uh, I can turn around and show you guys that my footprints will be shown. So that's definitely a good thing for, you know, hunters, security personnel, or for personal security if you want to track activity of people. So I'm going to walk right now. And just so you know, I'm barefoot. As you can see, I'm, I'm walking barefoot and I'm just walking normally. And uh, we're going to turn on the, the tracker now and see if we can't see my footsteps. Oh, there they are. See? See my footsteps? And that those really dark ones is where I was standing when I was filming, so it got warmer there. Um, but you could see my footprints here. Um, let's see if we can go to highlight. Let's see what other ones. Black. Got red here. See? Kind of cool. Green. You got the predator color, which shows it up, but not as well. But let's see, copper. Does it show it at all? Not as much on the copper, huh? Looks like it shows up better on the white and the black hot. Um, let's see. So let's walk again. We'll do another test. So I'm going to walk. Just normally walking, nothing crazy. Um, and we're going to check my footprints now. You can see they're already showing up. See that? See my footprints? Looks like uh, there, and that's where I was standing. You could see the footprints there, and they're, they're highlighting because they're. Uh, you can see they're, they're being highlighted because they're warm. It's kind of hard to do it on camera. Um, there's my wets where I was standing for a little while. It's kind of hard to do it on camera, but here's just my TV that's playing. So I'm playing Cabela's uh, African Hunter. So don't mind the noise. But that's where I was standing. I wasn't even standing near that long. And... Uh, as you can see, you know, you can still see my footprints too. Um, they're starting to disappear though, but let's see if the, it seems to be better on white. Yeah, my footprints are still, still barely showing up. You know, very, very barely uh, showing up now. But as you can see, my where I was standing, it's still pretty, pretty warm. And here's the TV, just for comparison. Uh, there's black hot, highlight white, highlight black, red, green, range, which is predator, copper, and white. So it looks like it's finally starting to cool down a little. Um, but, you know, you can see that it, it keeps the... I'm going to walk again. Let's try it again. Uh, I'm going to walk back and forth a few times just so you guys could see how much stuff is left over after I walk. You know, how much tracks are there. So I just walked three times and you'll see how, how cluttered it is with tracks on the thermal. Look at that. Look at that. See that? See how easy it is to... Uh, the thermal's a really powerful tool. Let's see if I can focus. There we go. It's a very powerful tool. That's where I was standing when I was filming. So it's definitely a powerful tool. Um, and, uh, that's pretty much it. This is my TV. But you can see how it's good for tracking things. Um, 
you know that's why it's called the tracker so let's see if we can still pick up some of my oh yeah see these are my footprints that I was just there see that pretty cool pretty neat huh let's see how that comes out yep there we go you see that look at that isn't that pretty cool so this thing is just a really powerful tool for especially for animals tracking animals um, it's definitely a powerful tool and I just want to see if it's going to work as well with uh, I want to see if it would work as well with with wearing shoes so I'm going to put some shoes on I'm going to put these loafers, just your basic loafers I'm going to see how well that works so I'm going to walk, these are just you know slip on loafers I'm gonna walk again and uh, see what happens. Maybe I'll start in a new area. Uh, hold on. I'm gonna walk here. And let's see if it shows up. Let's see if it shows up as well if you're trying to track while wearing shoes. Let's see. My guess is it probably won't show that well because it's, you know, shoes, they're not that warm, so it may not show as well. Yeah, so the shoes don't show as well, as you can see. Let's see. Yeah, the shoes don't, the shoes don't show as well. Let's do a test. Actually, they do show a little bit, as you can see. Not as much. Let's see. It showed any of my prints down there. Oh yeah, see? It showed where I was standing. Even though I'm wearing shoes, it showed showed my prints through the shoes. So it's pretty pretty impressive. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, I wouldn't expect that. Um, I guess that makes sense. Red, green, range, and let's see if it can just pick up where I was just standing. Is it going to pick that up? Yep, see it's picking it up very barely. It's picking it up a little. So I'll just go over the features actually. Um, Alright guys, so I'm going to show you how this thing works now. Um, I'm going to show you the controls. It's pretty easy to use. Uh, there's three buttons here. And uh, here's the power button. So you hold it down three seconds and it powers on. See, hold on. There we go, loop hold. Okay, so here's my deck and plant. And here's the neighborhood, just so you guys can see. And now we're gonna go through the different modes real quick. Uh, let's see, I may have to turn the brightness up a little so you can see it better. Sorry guys, just trying to focus the screen on the phone here. Okay, so now I have it on white hot. As you can see, the roof is warm, and so are the, the road and the cars. Then there is black hot. Uh, as you can see, it says black on the top. Um, so you can see the cars and the roof is warm. Obviously, the road is warm. Um, 
the deck you can see it's warm close to the edge where the sun was shining but closer to the doorway it's uh, cooler and the grass is a white color because it's cooler so then we'll do highlight white so that highlights the hot spots then you have highlight black so that highlights the hot spots as well as you can see the back of that car is warm because that's the direction of where the sun was shining um, then you have red so the the lighter red colors will show the like the road and the roof are, are warmer Then you have green then you have the predator color so the reds and obviously warmer and blue is cooler so as you can see that's because it was it's about four o'clock in the afternoon so the road is warm and so is the roof but as you can see the walls and the tree is cool and so is the grass over here um, just so for comparison you can see the tree grass and stuff like that you can see the tree is cool but the road is warm you can see that the road that's the road behind the tree there there's the road and so then we got predator I call it the predator but Leupold calls it range and you have copper so there's the tree again and uh, there's the roadway and the cars that are warm obviously because of the sun and then we got white again, black again, highlight white, highlight black, red, green, range, which I call predator, copper, one of my favorite ones. Uh, and then we got white again. So that's pretty much the main modes. And then I'll show you how the buttons work. Um, so you can do you can zoom so if you want to zoom let's say over there there's two types of zoom you have continuous zoom and, and then zoom so you have 2x 3x 4x 5 6 and then it goes back to 1 and then 1.7 you know 2 3 again and so on um, and then if you want to do continuous you hold this this is the button in the middle for zooming you hold it down and then it'll let you continuously zoom if you want to do that if you want to get more grainy and more fine grain zooming you know if you know, I want to zoom in on the roof or you know get more fine grain you just hold it down and it'll let you zoom and then the left button will zoom it out you can see that's three and a half um, and then to exit and go back to the normal you just press the power button once you can also uh, get like a little crosshair I don't know why they put that but I guess if you want to you know kind of help center your image you has a crosshair function you get that by double tapping the power button um, you can adjust the power or the brightness by holding the leftmost button down and then you can see I can make it brighter and it'll memorize the setting even after you turn it off um, you know so that's good for conserving battery power and also depending on you know when you're operating this you know during the day you may want it brighter if there's a lot of sunlight and then at night you can get away with using a lower brightness setting because um, right now during the day as you can see it's a little bit a little bit hard to see uh, on the lowest brightness setting um, but I can actually let's see so here's the brightest setting which is really bright and obviously at night if you use that brightness setting it's also going to reflect back onto your face so you know some people may not want that uh, you know if you're trying to be stealthy so what you can do is if you're operating at night you know, you can, uh, let's see, hold on, if you're operating at night and you want to be stealthy, you can lower the brightness, you know, and, and, because at night you don't really need, um, that much brightness, but during the day, 
you're gonna need more brightness um, so let's get back that brightness now so I see during the day I can go as bright as this even which is extremely bright um, which is excessive you know somewhere in the middle is usually good or on the lower third for me is fine um, so that's pretty much it that's just the overview of the features it's supposed to be waterproof and uh, I'd like to do some more testing but uh, it's kind of hard you know maybe if I get some pictures of some animals I'll try to film it and show you guys so all right guys so now that I've shown you a little bit of how the, the tracker actually works and um, you know how it works in the real world and stuff and some of the advantages like you know being able to track footprints I think is a huge advantage uh, for security for hunting for preppers for uh, you know anything you, you know variety of different users may find that a, a useful thing uh, for, for outdoorsmen um, so I'm just gonna give an overall summary and the limitations and why you would want to have this so you know if I'm a prepper and this is the reason main reason I bought it is for prepping uh, this is a good tool to have with you in your bug out bag um, in case something were to go down you have a way of detecting if there's any threats around you, whether it's animals or people, uh, especially at night when it's hard to see um, who's around you. This could also be useful in a survival situation as well um, for locating, you know, game animals, for locating uh, electrical outlets. Um, it, can sh it can show electrical outlets because they're warm due to the electricity passing through. Um, it can it can highlight a lot of things that you wouldn't normally see with the naked eye um, and it gives you some insight into your surrounding environment that you wouldn't otherwise know uh, that would pretty much be invisible to the naked eye because it picks up any type of heat source you know so it could be lights it could be an uh, if an animal was recently sitting on the ground you could see where it was sitting um, or you know if a person was was sitting down or walking somewhere you'll see their your, their you know evidence that they were there based on the heat signature you can see camouflaged vehicles you can see camouflaged people um, it's really just a very useful tool uh, for preppers uh, especially when you consider the price point and uh, how light it is and durability this is very well built it's durable um, you know the the picture is not the best um, but it's decent you know it's decent quality the only thing I would say is it has a small window here so it is you do kinda have some limitations up close if you want to scan an area up close you know but for longer distances it definitely works well like you know beyond 25 yards you know you can scan a whole area and look for heat signatures um, so you know it's so the advantages I would say is it's compact it's rugged it's easy to use it uses uh, CR123 batteries which you can actually replace with rechargeable 163340 batteries so you don't have to keep buying CR123s or carry you know a whole bunch of them with you if you're taking this into the woods or if it's a SHTF uh, tool uh, you're not going to want to carry like three four pounds of batteries with you so what I recommend is like I, what I'm going to do is ordering 16 340 batteries rechargeable and uh, and just store a bunch of those and just constantly you know charge them you know and like one of those batteries can be charged for um, 500 times you know it has a 500 life charge life cycle so you know if you have like f four of those batteries you can just keep that in your SHTF bag or your bug out bag and you can just constantly charge this thing um, so that's the pros because a lot of thermal imagers come with their own integral battery pack and the problem with that is if the battery pack fails you're out of luck you know because you can't just swap it out uh, easily you know versus something like this if the battery fails I can just go and get a CR123 battery from my local supermarket or you know I can scavenge those easily if we're talking about SHTF you can scavenge 
CR123 batteries pretty easily. Uh, they're commonly used in uh, the old school digital cameras and, and various cameras use them. Um, and then obviously stores, typically pharmacies and supermarkets have them. Um, so that's a big plus in my opinion for an SHTF tool. Um, so, and then the cons would be the, the digital zoom, which is, you know, not that great. But, and then I'll show you guys how you actually change the battery. You unscrew this, the eyepiece, and it has this uh, connector here, which I actually show you, let's see, it has the, shows you which side to put it, the positive side. I'm trying to focus it here, I don't know if you guys can see, CR123 plus, so it shows you that the plus side goes there, and there's the actual battery, it bends out of the way, and I just remove this, you know, and uh, pop it back in. As you can see, it's the, the aluminum is really thick, so it's not going to break or anything. It's very solidly built, and it, it only weighs 7 ounces, so this weighs as much as a typical tactical flashlight, you know, so it really has very little signature in your, uh, in your bug out bag. It's not going to weigh you down like some other thermal tools that are, you know, monstrous, you know. Um, so that's pretty much it guys. Uh, I definitely recommend this to you if you're a prepper, if you're uh, law enforcement, military, well if you're military you probably have much better gear but you know law enforcement, um, especially if you're off duty or something like that or you know doing some special operations, undercover work, whatever. Um, what else you know security personnel personal security if you want to investigate things in your own house or if you're going for a hike in the woods you know and you want to be able to scan around you outdoorsmen uh, hunters you know it's very good for security for hunting it has a wide variety of uses and uh, it's not a bad product you know I wouldn't say it's I wouldn't give it five stars uh, maybe four I would say um, you know but for what it is, it's it's good, you know, for the price, you know, uh, it's definitely rugged and you can't go wrong with Leupold products. They're very rugged and built well. Um, so that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll be back with more soon. Take care. God bless and have a good weekend.